Good morning and welcome to Cooley Outdoors. I am your host, Brandon Scott, and with me, who I guess didn't sleep very well last night, was, is uh, Nash Rarig. And today we are going to be hiking at Dungeness Spit uh, Wildlife Refuge. It might just be called Dungeness Wildlife Refuge. But the big draw to this today is a five mile long sand spit that sticks out and along into the Strait of Juan de Fuca. It is the longest sand spit in Washington and in the country, but is not the longest spit in the world. And I'll explain how this forms later, but first of all, let's go get on the trail. Well, surprise, surprise, another adventure, another filming of the book section and the outro at home after the fact, because I am crap. Well, as you know, today's adventure is hiking or strolling more likely along the Dungeness Spit on the northeast corner of the Olympic Peninsula. And anything to do with the Olympics, there's a good chance you'll see that book, so you recognize that book. But a new book to the series, not new book to me, is one of my couple of rock hounding books, Gem Trails of Washington by Garrett Romain. Um, technically, you could do a rock hounding in a lot of these places, unless it's a national park. Don't collect anything in a national park, but pictures and memories. So no, in like Mount Rainier, North Cascades, Olympic National Park proper. But if you're outside that and on public land, yes, you can, just don't take a ton of it. Dungeness Spit is one of those places, why? Because a beach is a great place to collect rocks. It's where they all collect after coming all down the rivers and there's all kinds of stuff amalgamating in. So with that being said, Dungeness Pit is in this. I don't really need to go over it because it's a beach. Lots of stuff to pick up. Out here on this, on the other hand, let's see if I can actually figure out. 30. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Dungeness Pit. 10 miles round trip, because it is five miles one way to the lighthouse. I believe that's to the lighthouse, not to the end of the spit. Yeah, that's just to the lighthouse. That's not even to the end of the spit. <clears throat> After the lighthouse, it kind of thins out and then bulbs up again. So that's probably another mile, mile and a half. Four stars, 10 miles round trip, five hours, 110 feet of elevation gain, because you have to go up the bluff or down the bluff, depending on which way you're going, at the start slash end of the hike. Easy, best time to do it in winter when there's not so many crowds and the beach is more exciting because it's gravel and rocky instead of sandy. Plus the waves are bigger and blah, blah, blah. But as you will see from the video today, it was sunny and calm and oh my goodness, we could see Baker because the fog was thick up against the Olympics. But your basic thing, Walking along the beach, be careful, don't be dumb, don't go wandering into the waves. There's where the spit looks like, you go along this bit. This is all National Wildlife Refuge, so you're not allowed to go in the winter. Yada, 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 pretty, pretty, pretty. Wanted to go out and go do a beach and go do something geologically unique, as I'll talk about later in the video. So yeah, I think that's it for that one. Cool. Screen, screen, screen. screen. So. Dungeness Spit, like I was saying, is the longest sand spit in the U.S. and it happens to be here in Washington. And <clears throat> it is formed by what is called a longshore current, which is a current that flows, as the name suggests, along the shore. <laughs> and this longshore current goes from west to east along the southern shoreline, technically on the southern shoreline of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. So the longshore current comes from the Pacific Ocean along from Port Angeles and then into the Sound. So that's the main longshore current. And as it does, it's transporting sand. That's how you get sand on sandy beaches. Same thing with ocean shores and Long Beach down on the southern portion of Washington's coast because all that sand and material is coming out of the Columbia River. Same idea. So how do you get a five mile long sand spit? Well, the um, shoreline changes direction so the shoreline goes from being mostly east-west to it dips towards the southeast and the current won't follow that into the bay so the longshore current stays where it's going and the shoreline diverges so all the sand is still being carried along the current <coughs> but as there's no shoreline for the current to bounce off of it slowly loses momentum and the sand slowly drops out of transport and lands on the floor of the strait. 
so as it does that and more sand builds up and more sand builds up and as the sand builds up it helps keep the longshore current stable and she just keeps building sand and building sand and building sand until you reach a I don't know what you call that an inflection point I guess math term uh oh math in the morning oh, oh god geez. oh no oh, math in the morning but anyway you reach an inflection point where the longshore current just can't stabilize or the sand can't stabilize any longer and it just kind of and that's how you get the termination of the sand spit simple math simple geology yay so this is five miles long and there's a one way and there's a lighthouse at the end of it we'll see if we go all the way down to the lighthouse but the longest one in the world i was reading up on this last night is actually i think on the black sea in ukraine and it's 67 miles long i have to look into that some more and see what that is like but that's not an easy simple day hike so out here this portion of the olympic peninsula this northeast corner of the olympic peninsula it's actually the driest portion of the peninsula. It is also one of the driest places in the entire western Washington. So, for example, Seattle, roughly where we're from, gets 36 inches, roughly, of rain a year. That's three feet or roughly one meter. Where Sabrina and I were a couple weekends ago for our anniversary at the ocean, in those rainforests, they get 12 feet or four meters a year. Out here it's like a foot, foot and a half. So it's, well, probably not that little, but it's considerably less than Seattle. So it's quote unquote dry compared to the rest of the place. And yeah, you're saying, well, it's so dry. Why is it so green? Well, you get a lot of fog. And that's the same reason why the redwoods, how they get so big is because they absorb all the fog. This area also gets a lot of fog, but it burns off by midday a lot of times. And you get a lot of sun out here a lot more sun than compared to the rest of the region and that's what we're hoping for today it's cloudy this morning but it's supposed to clear off so clear hopefully off 45 all day <clears throat> yeah you know regular seattle day well regular ish and that we're not going to get any rain but other than that we're going to walking along a nice gravelly beach doing some rock hounding and cruising about hopefully we won't run into too many other people so now we are descending down, ooh, hold on. You got something soft and squishy to wipe off the camera lens with? Glove. I can use this here. I got my prop. All right, so we are gonna descend the trail down into the sand spit. It's, you know, 200 feet down or so. But this is the five mile long Dungeness spit. So, and if you can see some of those white buildings and such in the sun that direction that is Victoria British Columbia on Vancouver Island so mm -hmm. the straight goes this direction and then you got the coastline here takes a bend towards the southeast but the current still goes that way so as it's going along it's drop 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 and sand and way, way out up. there five miles along the sand is the lighthouse now where We'll wait for these. All right, let's go down. So, where did all this material come from? Well, it's not from the Olympics. When we get down to the beach, we'll look at the rocks some, and I can tell you, it's not from the Olympics. It's all granites and various metamorphic rocks, which the Olympics are not made up of. The Olympics are basalt and other sedimentary layers like conglomerates and sandstone and siltstones. So, where did all this? stuff come from stuff. well it came from the north cascades now hold on there's a big ass body of water called the puget sound in the way how did that happen Gee, I wonder. well there's this thing called the ice age you may have seen the movies so when the ice age was here at its peak 15 to 18 thousand years ago we were probably be sitting under roughly 2,000 to 3,000 feet of ice just shoving everything and there was no Puget Sound because the ice the Puget Sound carved out the lowlands that later filled in with salt water as Puget Sound when the ice receded so as the ice came barreling down from Alaska down the Fraser River Valley and down out of the Skagit River Valley and blocked up and filled up Puget Sound it brought lots of material with it out of those areas and deposited in these 
big bluff that we are walking down and that we will get a good look of when we look west towards Port Angeles. This whole area from here to Port Angeles sits on like 150 foot to 300 foot tall bluffs. And that's the old moraine from the old ice sheet. And in the last 15,000 years, the ocean obviously has eroded some of that away. And as the longshore current picks up the eroded materials, it dumps it along and you get your beautiful sand spit. You get a couple of nice, unique quirks of geology all mixed in together and you get a beautiful, beautiful sand spit. This is a National Wildlife Refuge, so it is federal land from where we parked down there. And we'll walk, and we'll walk, and we'll walk. And we probably won't make it that far, but we'll walk and hang out. And I finally got Sabrina's tripod, so I'll put phones on tripod so they get actual height to them. And we'll take some long exposures and hang out along the beach. But the clouds should be going away as the day goes on. We're just gonna step up here real quick and you can look we might go down and go look at the bluffs a little bit but most of the time we're going that direction as you can see there's blue sky coming out what kind of silliness is that that poor child yeah <laughs> scotty bullied, scott scott to death or school. scott scotty scott just triple s <laughs> the ss scott sinking oh <laughs> ah there's some sunshine So, if you're wondering what these line of signs are up at the quote-unquote high tide mark, it is to keep people out of the leeward side where the wetlands and the marsh has formed behind the sand spit. Because the reason it's a wildlife refuge. Yeah, it's a wildlife refuge. So it's for to preserve the wintering habitat for all kinds of species of birds. And that is closed, I think, like September 30th. Through May 15th, it said on the sign I showed on camera. If you scroll back or take a screenshot or something, it'll tell you. But, so yeah, it's this first, I don't know, probably half mile or so. That's closed in the winter to help protect the migratory wintering birds. So but, it doesn't extend all the way down? No. I mean, when we go down, there's that secondary... Right, the Inlet, yeah, you're not supposed to go on that ever yeah. for the same reasons, but it's not like you really need to when all the action is over here on this yeah, side. So yeah, we'll cruise along the beach for a ways. Probably won't make it to the lighthouse. But we'll find a nice spot to set up shop. Oh, that's why I didn't grab out of the vehicle. What? Our little rollout chairs. Oh, well, I still got a, I still got a got sand. sand and a foam pad. Sand and hopefully on the rock. Yep. Yeah. We'll find a spot we like and we'll set up camp and probably snooze. That's be real. There's no wind. There's no wind. The sun's going to come out. It'll be a very pleasant late January day. Listen to the waves crashing along the beach and just nap out for a bit. I don't know, I get days like this until February. It's pretty late. Well, it's called the January thaw. This is we yeah. get a we get a couple of weeks of or we get a week or two of weird warm sunny weather and then we get smacked around with a winter storm or two in February. So hence why I wanted to get out here cuz before the storms come. Before the storms come. Oh, that's a pretty rock. No idea where it came from. That direction somewhere. But gonna get out and do things both days this weekend because pretty much my whole branch at work got the weekend off because we've been so slammed with work we've all been working like 75 80 hour weeks the last couple of weeks so nice. the branch manager's like nah we're calling in other branches for help you all take the weekend off and recharge so it's supposed to be like this both days mildly warm and partly sunny so we decided today we're gonna come here and tomorrow we're gonna go put the snowshoes on
kind of thought this thick fleece would be a mistake, and it is a mistake. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna straight up take my. Windbreaker. I think I'm just gonna straight up take my windbreaker off. Yeah. All right. So for those of you that were curious, this is what behind the spit looks like. Just a nice, calm, shallow, wide lagoon, perfect for birds and fish and all kinds of things to hang out and relax for the winter. So we'll keep walking along. Nash has been finding some rocks. You know, doing what you do when you're along the beach. Pick up a rock and skip it. And pick up a rock and skip it. So we'll cruise for a bit longer and see. See where we find ourselves a good spot to hang out for a bit. Because it's only... 10:45. Be a good spot to take a nap and read a book. Well, we get a long exposure running. Probably take one out here somewhere. At least, probably just one. Yeah. There's not all. There's not all that much, quote unquote, dynamic scenery. Yeah, you've got the waves crashing and smashing, and you got the clouds moving, but that's all, all you got. There's not a whole bunch of unique viewpoints to be enjoyed. So the sand is firmer. So, like out at the ocean beaches. Oh, that's much better walking on. Yeah. The beach characteristic changes mightily from summer to winter. In summer, the ocean's a lot calmer. <clears throat> There's a heck of a lot less storms rolling through. So the currents are a lot gentler which means you get a lot more sand built up on the beaches. So this will be a, almost a completely sandy beach in summer. But in winter, with all the storms that come through and the big waves and all the extra energy, most of the sand stays out. Yeah, I'm not wearing rubber boots so I can't get wet. So most of the sand stays out in deeper water where it's calmer, otherwise it just gets tossed about in the waves. So you get a much gravelier beach. Yeah. I wonder how someone planted that in here. It's been here quite a while. Someone must have spent like all day. I mean, there's a couple of them planted here. So that's interesting. There's no way these trees grew out here. Much too salty, no source of fresh water. They would have saltified their roots. Someone had to have dug a big ass hole during a low tide in summer and shoved the tree in and now it's stuck there until the waves snap it off at its base which they're working on doing so who knows how much longer that'll be there I'm trying to find a date on it Shh. all I saw was 2016 yeah Huh? I was hoping to have my sunglasses out by now. Eh, it's working on it. You won't really need them until we're walking back no, anyway. Back,
All right, so we're heading back to the car now. We probably went, oh, I don't know. Oh, of course, as soon as we leave the section of beach we've been sitting on <laughs> for the last sun hour pops. and a half, getting the sun pops out. And glaciers, and not glacier, Baker Peaks now out fully too. <sighs> Angry oh, noises. Oh, there's the sunshine. Oh. oh, that's good. Anywho, we probably went mile and a half, two miles down the beach. Hung out, listened to the waves. Uh, I got a long exposure of ocean waves to listen to, watched a freighter go by. They also shot a long exposure looking this direction, hoping to get the Olympics out. But they were playing hide and seek and they wouldn't come out for very long. So, hung out on the beach for a while. Now we're gonna saunter our way back and go home for the day and uh, get ready to go snowshoeing tomorrow. But we'll go check out the bluffs at the end of the beach first. Huh? Yeah. Oh, the sun feels good. But if we were to quickly stop and look at one of these sections of gravel, you can see the amazing amalgamation of different kinds of rock. Got various different volcanic granitic rocks of all different kinds of colors. Got your greens, you got your blues, you got your grays, and then you get your mineral -y stuff, so like your agates and your chalcedonies. All kinds of other exciting stuff. There's a nice big chunk of granite. Mmm. That's what makes these beaches so much fun to go rock hounding on in the winters, because there's just so much variety of stuff to look through. Just all... I know, I need to turn. Ow, that way, get the rocks in the sun a little better and you can see. But that's what makes rock hounding on Washington so, ooh, ooh, speaking of, ooh, Nash, I got some color in this agate. Look at the color in that chunk of agate right there. Mm -mm -mm. But I mean, you could spend hours and hours and days combing through this stuff. Rotate with the sun, get the banding in that one. Look at the color I found in that one. Not, I don't know, but that's what makes rock hounding in Washington so fun, especially on these beaches. Big variety. You got a massive variety of rocks to look at and comb through. And it's best in winter when the beaches, when the waves are strong and not full of, and knocking all the sand off the beach, exposing the gravels below. Getting to that point. That's why I wear a hat with the bill on it. That look good hats. Shit. Look good beanie. Palm beanie. <sighs> He's a palm boy. I'm a palm boy. <laughs> Such a cute little palm boy. Palm boy. Let's see here. Sailboat. Footsteps. Max. Max. Something. something, something, and it looks like he's coming out of a jack in the box. It'd be those little kids that we passed by. And then more scribbles in there. Sloan. I'm assuming that's someone's last name. But this, this is almost what it's all about. The sun's out and warming us. If only the clouds in front of us obscuring the northeastern portion of the Olympic Mountains would go away and we could look at some glaciated snow covered beauties. Probably can't pick it up on the camera. If I were to go up to the tip over here on the highest point where there's no schmutz in the way, we'll see.
if I can't point Mount Baker out. Ooh, ooh, hold on. Distraction. Look at the color of that dude. That's definitely coming home. Anywho, get up to this high point, and that's actually kind of perfect. So, oh crap, where am I? So, got there, so right there, you can see the freighter, the white mass behind it, the baker, and then just over like there is the lighthouse, and there's two freighters out there, and then there's Baker and the lighthouse. So that's a volcano, that's the northernmost of the five volcanoes in Washington, and then that way, which I got some good glimpses of. Oh, that sunshine feels good. Oh, winter sunshine is amazing, especially when you're out on the beach. But I mean, that's really what it's all about. If the Olympics were out, that'd be super sweet. But I have a feeling I'm gonna drag Nash's butt out here to do some more hikes in the Olympics here in the next couple of months, hopefully. And then I can try really hard to go up into the Olympics this next summer when I have time. In case Sabrina and I do move east to the other side of the mountains and it becomes all but impossible to get to the Olympics from there. So. But yeah, sunshine, little people, cool enough to where you're all still bundled up, and the occasional volcano to look at, with a seagull hanging out on driftwood. Oh. oh, Nash got himself an agate. Alright, so we are coming back to the base of the spit where it breaches off of the uh, bluffs. As you can see, the shoreline comes in and then makes this turn and goes that way. Whereas the current wants to keep going that way through and behind us and along. As you can also tell, let's get the sun behind the trees for a second, this bluff is pretty tall. It's probably a good 60 to 100 feet in most places. And all that material came from that direction, back where Mountain Baker is in Vancouver, BC, and Bellingham and everything else. That's because as the ice sheet came in, it more than likely dropped all the sediment here as it smacked up against the Olympic Mountains and had to change shape. And as it changed shape, it just lost a lot of its sediment, or piled up a lot of its sediment against the Olympics and or as it melted away and it was trying to flow outwards toward the Pacific, same thing happened. The sediment hit the Olympics as on its way westward and dropped out of the systems. So you got hundreds of feet tall beds of sediment piled up that the Straighter one to Fuca salt water eventually floods back inwards, slaps up against and starts eroding away, and the current does the rest. We'll come look at these. Oh, of course. Now the sun in the mountains want to come out when I'm not able to take a long exposure anymore. We'll take a look, and you can see, actually, we'll go get a close up of this. You can see the intimate layering in these glacial deposits, and out of the sun now you can see you can see the bedding of these deposits and the different horizons and yeah this is kind of dangerous standing here but of course the sun's in the worst possible spot you can see the bedding in that and that is like pretty solid mud it's pretty much what it is 15,000 year old consolidated, slightly lithified mud. And you can see various 
smaller rock layers when the currents and such were different. This could also be from like old tsunamis as it receded too. You get the finer sediments and you get like a tsunami or something or an out more likely an outburst from the glacier itself. Dumps a bunch of hard sediments and then it finds up again and then you get the back to the sand and another big gravel horizon and so on and so forth. And of course there's hundreds and hundreds of more feet of this below us because the bedrock down at the bottom of the sound is two, three hundred feet below sea level right now. So there's just massive amounts of sediment got left here and started getting transported eastward. That'll pretty much sum it up for today's adventure. Nope, still can't see the mountain sun glares too hard. But that'll pretty much sum it up on Dungeness Spit and the Dungeness Wildlife Refuge. Yay, another outro video in front of the bookcase. Why? Because I am poop at doing this on site. I'm usually pretty good at doing the intros on site, but the books, I mean, the books are, unless I do it in the car in Rex, but that's kind of awkward to do. There's not a lot of space. But doing the outros, there should be no reason why I can't do the outros before we drive off and head home. But I didn't. Oh, well. Um, normal stuff. Thank you for joining us on today's adventure. Please give a like and a subscribe and a comment down below what you like to see, what you didn't like to see, what you thought I may have missed. If you have been on the spit before or if you wanted to know more about something on the spit, please let me know. Otherwise, tomorrow, so Sunday the 23rd of January, right? Yes. Sunday the 23rd of January, the very next day, we'll be going up to Mount Rainier to go snowshoeing, Nash, Sabrina, and I. Even though this is being filmed the Monday, so the day after the Sunday. Oops. Anywho, we'll be going up to Mount Rainier the next day, so that's the great thing about Washington. One day you can go stroll along the beach, and the next day you can go 5,000 feet up the side of a volcano and go snowshoeing. That's just the beauty of Washington. And the day after, if we had a three-day weekend and I really wanted to, although wrong time of the year to do it in January, I could theoretically have gone two hours further east into the desert and go play in the sand on in the desert so it's all kinds of good things to do but thank you for joining me uh let me know how we did or how i did with the video and the narration nash says he's been watching some of the videos since he's obviously couldn't go when we went to the coast for our anniversary and he thinks the narration is getting better it's more natural which is what i want i don't want it to just be like hi i am brandon you know monotone yuck but let me know if it's getting better if not I'll continue to work on it. Hopefully it does get better. Thank you for joining us, and ciao.